So enter how many Fibonacci numbers you want. And I'm just going to say, give me 30. And there we are. So that's it. The length is 30 and we have the 30th Fibonacci number. In this video, I'm going to give you another example of a handy program that will be very useful when it comes to job interviews or interviews for a university when it comes to programming. And in this case, we're going to do it in C sharp. So we're going to use the Fibonacci sequence in C sharp. We're going to create a little program which allows us to enter the amount of Fibonacci sequence numbers that we want to display. And then it will display that exact amount of Fibonacci sequence numbers. All right, so let's get started. How to use the Fibonacci sequence in C sharp. And before we go to the C sharp part, we first of all look at the Fibonacci sequence, a little bit of the history. Where does it come from? What is it even? And then we're going to see how to use it in C sharp and how to create this cute little program that we have there. Even though it's just a console program, but I'm just gonna call it cute now because well, that's how it is, right? Let's go ahead and check out who discovered this Fibonacci sequence. And well, this was this guy called Leonardo Bonacci or Leonardo of Pisa or Leonardo Bigolo Pisano. So Leonardo the Traveler from Pisa, pretty cool name. I also want to have these cool kind of names after I find something useful. So if you find something useful, and you want to have a cool name, then please leave a like and that will help you somehow. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so this guy, this Fibonacci guy in his young age, he learned about the Hindu Arabic numeral system in Buja, Algeria. So as you can see, he really was a traveler. I mean, coming from Italy to Algeria, that's quite a task. And then, well, especially in that time, so it was in the 13th century or even in the 12th century. So he traveled around the Mediterranean coast, meeting with many merchants and learned about their system of doing arithmetic. And he soon realized the many advantages of using the Hindu Arabic system, which unlike the Roman numerals used at the time, allowed easy calculation using a placed value system. So in 1202, he completed the Liber Abaci, Book of Abacus, or the book of calculations which popularized hindu arabic numbers in europe well i guess now you know when the hindu arabic numerals arrived in europe so hindus and arabs were quite advanced when it comes to mathematics back in the day so how was the sequence discovered so how did he discover the sequence well there was a competition in pisa italy in 1225 and the question was Beginning with a male and a female rabbit, how many pairs of rabbits could be born in a year? Well, the answer was 233 pairs of rabbits at the end of a year. And he went ahead and just said, all right, let's get started. We have no rabbits born at the beginning and the initial pair has not had time to become pregnant or to reproduce yet. So at the beginning, we have no additional pairs. We have one pair, right? And then the first month, one pair of rabbits are born. So rabbits are super fast when it comes to reproducing. So after the first month, there was already one pair. During the second month, again, one pair of rabbits was born and the new rabbits have not yet matured to bear young ones. So at the end of the second month, we have one pair, all right? During the third month, two pairs of rabbits reproduce and one pair is not ready. So two pairs of rabbits are born. In the fourth month, three pairs of rabbits reproduce and two pairs of rabbits are not ready. So three pairs of rabbits are born. And then in the fifth month, five pairs of rabbits reproduce and three are not ready. So five pairs of rabbits are born and so forth. And there you can already start to see the sequence. So it starts with zero, then it goes to one. It's one again, then two, then three, then five. So the current number that you're looking at is always the sum of the preceding two numbers. So Let's have a look at the Fibonacci sequence in a long list. So here is the long list. It starts with 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so forth. So you can see 1 is the sum of 0 and 1. 2 is the sum of 1 and 1. 3 is the sum of 1 and 2. 5 is the sum of 3 and 2. So you can see it's the sequence is keeping on like this and the numbers are growing steadily. And that is basically the Fibonacci sequence. So you can also see the mathematical equation if you are a fan of these kind of things. So basically 
here you can see in the table once again how this calculation comes about and how these numbers are generated. So now you divide any Fibonacci number, let's say 5, with its preceding number, for example 3, and the result is very close to 1.618, which is also called phi. So phi is also believed to be used in ancient Greece to denote the ratio of physical perfection. Now, if we look at this from a graphical point of view, you can see that this blue line is basically constantly getting bigger and bigger. And, and we can even find that in nature because that's basically how the shell of a snail looks like. So you can see this is in a 2D representation where it's constantly getting bigger. So the spiral is growing and growing because we start at zero, at this zero point, then we have one, we add one to it, then we get two. So two times two, one, plus two is three, so three times three, and then five times five, and so forth. So that's how this 2D representation of the Fibonacci number comes about. Quick pause. In this video, you'll learn something about C-sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C-sharp developer, then definitely check out my C-sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C-sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. At this point, I'd say let's have a look at the Fibonacci sequence in C-Sharp. So let's write this little program, which will allow us to print the Fibonacci sequence with as many numbers as we enter. All right, so first of all, we need to prompt the user to enter the number. And we're going to need a couple of variables. So for, we are going to need the Fibonacci length. So what is the amount of values that we want to have in our program? So we start with the Fibonacci length. Then we need to have the three numbers. So we need to have the two preceding ones and the one that we're currently looking at. So we need F1, F2, and F3. And then we want to prompt the user to enter a number. So we're basically going to say, please enter how many Fibonacci numbers you want to display. And then we parse whatever the user has entered into an integer and we store that in Fibonacci length. So the variable that we created up here, this integer, which is a whole number, and we're going to use that for a for loop, this Fibonacci length in order to calculate the Fibonacci numbers correctly and display them accordingly. All right, let's start with, first of all, printing the initial numbers. So the initial numbers are zero and one because we need to start somewhere. And zero and one are a great start because these are the first numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. So now F3 will be, in the first iteration, it will be one because zero plus one is one. Okay, so what is an iteration? Well, an iteration is an execution of a loop and we're going to basically use this for loop here in order to display the numbers. So we're starting with i equals two, and then we check is i less than the Fibonacci length, because we at least want to have two numbers, right? And we start with two numbers because, well, F1 and F2 are there already. So now we can go ahead and start with the next one or really do the calculations with the next one because that's where it starts, right? So first of all, we get F3, so we say, okay, what is F3? It's the sum of F1 and F2. Then we write that number out with a little bit of space. So we just say, okay, I want to have a little bit of space after the number because otherwise I would have a huge number, which is the different numbers combined to each other or connected to each other. And that's not what we want. We want to have this empty space in between. And then we need to set the latest preceding numbers to be the next one numbers. So basically what was F2 before now will be F1. So in the next iteration of this for loop will be F1. And what was F3 before will now be F2 because we are going forward in the sequence. Okay, so if the sequence is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, then if F1 was 0, F2 was 1, then F3 will be 1. And then in the next iteration, this here needs to be F1 and this here needs to be F2. So we can calculate F3. 
and in the next iteration this will be f1 this will be f2 and this will be f3 and so forth so that's what the for loop will do it will take whatever number we have entered manually so the user has entered once prompted and then we do all of the beautiful calculation and in the end we just add another empty space here and we can even write something like that's it and maybe we want to even add the number so if you want to say what the length is the length is and then whatever our length was so here would be the fibonacci length all right so let's run this fibonacci sequence program and enter a value so enter how many fibonacci numbers you want and i'm just gonna say give me 30. and there we are so that's it the length is 30 and we have the 30th fibonacci number so you can see the 30th number is 514,229. all right you made it all the way to the end thanks a lot for still being with me now there are only a couple things to do leave a like hit that subscribe button leave a comment if you have any questions or remarks and have some ideas for cool topics that we could do even and then check out one of those videos all right i hope to see you there